Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to uh, create a Flutter app and use shared preference to save uh, key value pairs. So first off I'm just going to create my Flutter app and then I'm going to go to the pub spec. So you want to go to pub dev and look up shared preferences and you'll copy this line from installing into your pub spec.yaml and that will go ahead and install the um, package for you. Cool, so now I've saved and that will go off and install that. So what I want to do is open my main.dart file and I'm going to want to import my package for shared preferences. So I open that pub dev um, again and go to the example, you can see the import line for that shared preferences package. So I'm just going to copy and paste that across to my app. I'm just going to give you an idea of what I'm working with to start. So I'm just going to run um, run what I've got from the default um, Flutter app. So it loads up and I've got this little button I can press to increment a counter. But I just want to show you that if I click out and close that app, If I reopen, then the value of the counter isn't persisted, so I'm going to want to sort that out first. So this is going to be my first um, thing that I'm going to show you with shared preferences, and then I'm going to move on to showing you how to actually um, save JSON into your shared preferences if you want to have objects in there. So firstly, when state is being initiated, I want to go and load my prefs and um, update my counter to be whatever's in my shared preferences. So I'm just going to initialize, uh, create this function now. It'll be async because um, when you're getting the shared preferences instance, you'll be doing an await. So first off, you're going to get the shared preferences instance. And then I want to get my saved counter value. So to do that, I'll go prefs.getInt. And then I'll pass in the key. And I'm going to call my key counter for this. If it doesn't have a value, then I'll just set save counter value to zero as that's going to be my default. Then I'm going to want to set state and that's just so that um, my counter is updated on screen and it re-renders the widgets. So that's how I'll load any existing counter, but I haven't actually saved anything to load just yet. So what I'm going to want to do is inside this increment counter, I'm going to want to once again get the shared prefs instance. And then I'm going to want to set the set an int against the shared prefs and I want that to be the same key as what I've specified above, which is counter. And then I'll pass in the value I want it to be, which will be counter plus one, because I'm incrementing my counter here. Cool. 
Cool, so now if I run that again, once it loads up, I should see that once again, there's a counter that says they're pressed at zero times. But this time when I press the button and exit the app, it should um, load up and show my saved counter value. So you can see it loads up that I've already pressed the button four times. So it sort of keeps track of how many times I've pressed the button in previous sessions of the app because it's storing that um, value in shared preferences. So now I've shown you how to set an integer. You can set many different types of um, variables in, inside the shared preferences, but one that's quite useful to know and is a little bit less straightforward is how to save an object into it. So to do that, I'm just going to create this new object here. So I'm creating this new class and it's got some properties, string name and an integer age. Basically what I want to do is I'll create an instance of this object and then I will convert it to JSON, which I'll then save into the shared preferences. So it's a pretty simple um, object, it doesn't really do a lot here. It's mainly just for convenience of generating the JSON. So basically what that to JSON thing will do is basically create um, a JSON string with the property name and the value of whatever my object's name is and the same for age. So now when I'm loading prefs, I actually want to load my user info as well. So I'm going to... Um, I'll load the JSON from the preferences, so I'll go get string and I'll pass in my key, which is going to be user info. And if that um, doesn't exist, then I will get a default user info. So just an empty string for name and zero for age and just to JSON just to make it match with what my um, user info JSON variable is expecting. Then I'll do a JSON decode that's just to um, convert my JSON into an object they can then um, reference different properties of. I'm going to clear these out. Basically, it's just specifying, um, describing what the different widgets are doing inside this um, main Dart file. I'm going to want to add two text text widgets. So these are going to display the saved name and age. And actually to do that, I'm going to need to um, create my text editing controllers. So basically what I'm going to have is two user inputs that the user will enter data into um, for name and age. And when the text changes, it will save it to shared preferences. And um, my, my name and age text will update on screen to reflect that.
So when I'm loading the preferences, I'll set this um, name and age here. Set the, set the controller text to be whatever I get from the user info object. So that'll be the default value if there is none. And so here in my text widget, I want to show whatever's in the name controller.txt because it's going to reflect what's been saved. Same for the age, except the age controller instead of the name controller. So also need text fields that the user can enter the data into. These are going to be for name and age. Giving it a border just sort of lets the user see easily where the text field is and so it makes it easier for them to interact with. And giving a label means the user knows what data you're expecting them to enter in. going to put a size box in between these purely because I want them to be spaced apart a little bit just to make it a bit more readable. Um, if I was doing this properly I'd probably put inside padding instead just because then I'll get the borders around the um, outside edges but for this demo it's not really a UI demo so I'm not too concerned about that. Cool, so I've got my preferences being loaded, but I haven't got them being saved yet. So to do that, oh yeah, first, oh yeah, that's another thing. With the text editing controllers, you need to implement the dispose function, so override it um, and dispose your text editing controllers when the widgets are being disposed of. So that's what I'm doing here. If you want to know more about that, you can just read about it in the text field documentation. Cool. So now that I've got my um, text fields, I'm going to want to be able to update the user info when the text changes. So I've created this function update user info. And I'm going to get an instance of the shared press once again. I'm also creating a user info um, object with the name and text which I'm getting from my name controller and age controller. Oh yeah, because it, um, it's expecting an integer here, I need to pass the age controller text. And then I'll set my string for user info. To be the JSON of my user info object. So that's how I update my user info. Um, but I'm going to want to do that whenever the name or age up, um, changes. So to do that, I add a listener to the name controller and age controller. And that will call the update user info function and save my name and age to the shared preferences. If 
Oh yes, another thing that I meant to do here is um, I actually meant to change my text field to have for age to have a keyboard type that is um, for numbers and that's because I'm expecting a number input here because it's an age. So that will control what sort of keyboard shows up on screen and what the user can enter. Cool, so that's loading, but it doesn't seem to be quite working. You can see that my counter, which had been previously saved, isn't loading. So I can see it's happening on line 102 of my main.dart file. So if I go there, you can see it's because I'm trying to assign my integer to a string. So here I will just um, call dot to string on my integer and to make it a string and that should work. You can see now that my um, counter has been loaded and I can enter a name. For some reason it's not updating my name and age. So I think what's causing that is probably because I don't, when I update my user info, I don't set state. So I'm just going to call set state. That's just going to trigger the reload of the screen here. And it's because I'm not using a particular um, field and setting the value of that. So here if I call set state. that triggers the reload and you can see the name is on the screen. It's been entered. And if I type in an age, they'll also show on screen. So, and if I push that button, it's also updating. So I've got Jimmy, age two, and his, he's pushed the button eight times. So now I'm going to close out just to show you that it's all been saved. So I'm closing the app. And when I reopen it, you can see Jimmy, age two, and he's pushed the button eight times as expected. So it's all been loaded from um, my shared preferences. And if any, if I make any changes, they'll be saved back to shared preferences and loaded the next time I open the app. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for the day. Um, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more content.